you want to catch me up a little bit? Yeah, go ahead and get it opened up. I already have it opened up and I have the shape drawn. I'm trying to uh, select the vectors and then delete the line. Yeah, I'm stuck there too. I managed to put two nodes. Alright, so click node editing. And I go over and click those two. Alright, you've already clicked those two. See those little squares? Alright, so click the circle. Alright, you haven't clicked the circle because it doesn't click it's not click. There's no squares there. Okay. So somewhere near that yeah. intersection, mm -hmm. right, -click right click and click the cut vector. Because yeah. right you have to cut the circle and the square. Cut. Oh, okay. So yeah, you can't you can't just cut one because then it won't it'll click it'll on leave the that weird line in the middle of the circle. Okay, now do the same. Not right click. Not cut. He's already cut it. Okay. There's already a square there. So go down to here. Just right click it. Cut. Now you gotta click the circle. Do the same thing as intersection. Now, there's a faster way to do this on an easy shape. Switch to this. Yeah, how do I know what to do this? Click on this, click on the circle, and now come down here, right click, and cut the circle vector. Now you do the same thing down there. Okay, now. You want to go to your select tool, and then just click those parts you don't want. Hit your delete key. Click the other one. Delete key. All right. Oh, you have two circles there. I only have two circles. That's weird. That's, I wonder why that looks funny. I have to open You drop one without the other. There you go. Just um, you have that center bit highlighted. Just hit your delete key. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Now those are still two objects we have to join the other right, There we go. Now you want to go to right down here, right there, which is join vectors. All right. You have to now come over here, See hold your shift key, and click right there? on the square and the circle when, on the yeah, line. When you the line? That, yeah, you line. Kind of no, the line that's there. The cursor. Still. Okay. So it's fine. No, no, don't worry. No, don't worry. Okay. Clean that up. Okay. So now we go. Touchpad is not always the best. Now hold. Okay. You got to hold shift yeah. to, to select both. You don't have to hold shift just to select one. Shift to see and select multiple times. Okay. All right. Now it says you have two open. Right here. None are closed. And that is. All right. And with a tolerance of four tenths of a thou, which is Four, this, four thousandths of an inch, really. Which is this one. Um, there still will be two open, so you need to increase that until you get okay, one close. Those two oh, so okay. and just and tell it point open. one. And change your columns and not to pick up that little All right, so you now switch to one closed. Uh, click join. Uh, All right, now that it's completely well lit, one piece. Now I'm just going to click join. All right, cool. Now I was just showing the, you can close that menu. I was just showing the resize tools and the move tools. You want to get out of that menu real quick? Close. I was showing the resize tool. Would you click that? Yep, you're on it. And then you click your vector and you can, you can position it and move it um, super precisely within a thousandth of an inch. Uh, not, not by dragging it, by, by giving it numbers on your, your thing. So if you had to position it at a very specific point on the board, you could. All right, now click close. You have a very simple menu right next to it for scale. Just your reset mode. Scale selected vectors. So if you have to have that at a very precise size, you can do it right there. Okay. All right, now there's an option on this called link X, Y, and that, what that'll do is it'll let you change oh, one side box. and it'll automatically change the other side no, so it doesn't distort it. Okay. If you unclick yeah, that, it'll allow you to distort yeah. shapes and you don't always want to do that. Right. All right, so I usually keep link X, Y connected. All right, click close. So you can delete the other one. Yeah. And then, uh, now, the is that connected as one? That. Yeah. There. And that's I'm, what he did. Gonna, I didn't, he did so fast I didn't realize. But. I'm going to pin your tab there so you don't know where it's on. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to real quick, we're going to turn this into a real quick tool path. That way you know after you draw something how to actually turn it into a render, you see how the machine's going to cut it. So on the right hand, in the top corner, you should have a tab that says tool path. If you hover over it, it comes out, and if you get off of it, it goes back. Sometimes that gets annoying. So if you what corner? Top right-hand corner of your screen. It says tool pass. There it is. All right. There's a little push pin 
where it says auto hide if you ho hover it, click that, and it stays there forever. It's super annoying if it's not pinned. Um, that's your toolpath list. Now this is for the machining operations. All right, for something like this, um, I just need a pocket in my material. So I need that shape, and let's say I need it a quarter inch deep because I have this plate that's gonna drop down in there, this component. So I'm gonna go down to my toolpath operations, all right, and I'm gonna look on my top row, set up material, which is what we did when we first opened the program. We set up our board. All right, the next thing is called a V-carve, which is uh, if you have to do things with details, you use a V-shaped tool and it can 3D mill over top things. We're not gonna use that right now. The next thing is profile toolpath, which means the tool will follow along a line and that is all it'll do. There are some options. You can tell it to fall along the outside of the line, the inside of the line. We use that for cutting out a shape. So I usually use that as my last thing to cut out the sign. So it's, it cuts itself out, so I don't even have to, to bandsaw it. Um, after that, we have pocket, which is what we're going to do. And what that'll do is inside of any shape selected, it will mill that whole thing out as deep as you want it to. After that, we have a create drilling tool path. This is for drilling more than one little hole and you just give it positions to go to, and it'll just const it'll just go and just drill holes there. All right, say if you gotta have a plate with 500 holes, I don't wanna drill 500, or I don't wanna draw 500 circles that are precisely on size. I'll draw one, I'll copy and paste it, and then I go to drilling cycle, and I'll just tell it where I want it to drill. Then after that, we have texturing. Um, this is, uh, you use a rounded nose tool, and if you want the board to have like grooves and scratches in it, you use that tool pad. It's a very long, slow process, but if you want you know, something to have a real cool textured background, that's what you're gonna use. Um, below that are some more advanced tool paths we're not gonna worry about right now. We're just gonna go to Pocket, and with our vector selected, we'll click Pocket. All right. And um, I need to see someone else's, because mine's already been set up. All right, so your start depth on the right-hand corner, this is cutting depth, your start depth is zero. That means it starts cutting at the top of the part, which is what we want. If you have two pockets and you want to have one inside the other, you need to tell it that the second pocket starts at the bottom of the first pocket. All right, but for now we're just going to keep it zero. And then cutting depth. Uh, we set our material at 0.5. Uh, How do we know what the second pocket is? Oh. If, if I had another pocket drawn. Okay you would already have a program, so you would know how deep it was. Oh, we're drawing. C is your second pocket? No, is the cutting depth of the pocket we're doing. This is, you, you do one, one pocket per tool bag. Start depth? Zero, so the top of the material is where it's gonna start cutting. Okay. And then pocket depth, I'm just gonna call it a quarter inch, so 0.25, that is one quarter of an inch. Okay, I don't think uh, you just tell it in positive. It knows it's doing it in the negative. Okay. Yeah. So just give it 0.25. Then we're going to select our tool. All right. Mine says end mill 0.5. Uh, yours says end mill 0.125. You guys probably all say end mill 0.125. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to click select. And there's a whole bunch of tools there. Yeah. Yeah. Just click end mill 0.5. What do we have loaded up right now? Or are you changing them out all the time? I change them out all the time. End mill. And I will. I will vet everyone's programs for the first couple months to make sure that the speeds and speeds are right. Because that's a knowledge based thing that I can't just tell you right now what it is. It, it takes, you know, you're doing this tool in this material and you're cutting this depth, I gotta run some numbers. Where did you find the end mill 0.5? Alright, when, when you click select under the tool on the right hand side, it pulls up the tool this database. Right. I looked right past it. Yep, yeah, and click the end mill 0.5 inch and click OK. All right, it says the next thing is use larger area clearance tool. So say I have a part that is, say it's two foot wide, two foot tall, and it's a giant pocket. I want to put like a one inch end mill in there because a half inch end mill is going to have to run back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. It's going to take forever. So if I have a one inch end mill at my disposal, a one inch cutter, all right, I can tell it use a one inch cutter first and then go to the half inch cutter to finish the edges because that one inch cutter can't get in the sharp corners like a half inch can. All right, but we're not gonna use- What's the larger area player still? We're not gonna use one right now because we don't have one. All right, and then underneath that it says clear pocket. This is uh, the angle of attack basically, is, is how the uh, cutter is going to move in that pocket. 
Uh, offset is usually fine for most things. Raster is if you want it to, if you're trying to make your toolpath a little bit more efficient and you know a raster is going to do it because a raster cuts at angles instead of in a spiral. All right, so we're just going to clip offset. We're just going to cut it in spiral, which is very simple. Pocket allowance, just keep it at zero. Uh, ramp plunge moves. So what this means is it's going to cut into the pocket a little bit. It's not going to cut the whole quarter inch and then plow through it. It's going to cut down a little bit, uh, maybe an eighth of an inch, and then it's going to run around. And when it goes to drop down again, we want it to ramp the plunge move, which means it's going to move along one axis when it does it. Some tools can't plunge straight down in the material. They have to move sideways to cut properly. Huh. All right. Um, for what we're doing now, we don't have to click it. Um, I use it a lot. Uh, it's, it saves the bits and it keeps the machine from bogging down. So I usually just give it a uh, ramp plunge moves distance of 0.5. So if you guys want to use it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter what that dimension is. That just means the distance over which it plunges at an angle. So uh, it, it's just to help it's, save the bit. It's a horizontal distance? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But no no, no straight angle. If half inch it was moving, it would get down to the new depth. Yeah, yeah. X or Y. Um, and then below that it says safe Z. And this is just an overview of everything. Mine's going to be a little bit different. Yours should say X0, Y0, Z0, Z.8. Uh, mine says Z2.0. Um, we'll change that later. But basically that means is when it starts this tool path, where do you want the tool to start at? All right. So the only time you change this is if you have a clamp in the way. So if you know you're going to have a clamp that's real close to the edge of the part, you're going to want to move your X and Y somewhere else. So what this means is, say I have 10 pockets. I'm doing one pocket profile right now. If I made 10 of these, all right, after every single pocket, it's going to go back to the home position, and then it'll start the new one. All right, it's, it's just its safe location. It knows it can go. All right, so you want to make sure when you look at your setup on the machine, you want to make sure there's not a clamp sitting there you're going to plow into. All right. How do you know? So you're saying the home position is where it's safe for that head to be? Yeah. The cutting head? Yeah. Yeah, How does it get to that home position? It comes um, after it's done cutting something, right. or at the beginning of a program, right. it will bring the Z up to that home Z. On your, your guys' case, it says 0.8. So it'll bring it up to 0.8, or if it's up, it'll bring it down to 0.8. Oh, it's and then, okay. that's what Z is. All right. All right. And then X and Y is, X is when you're looking at the machine, X is in and out, and Y is across. Then what it'll do is, it'll do Z by itself, It'll move it to point eight, and then X and Y at the same time. It'll run at an angle to that that location. So you want to make sure there's no clamps in that line of path. All right. I can. That's something that you kind of have to have your setup in mind. So I'll do a refresher on this when we go to do version 2.0 on the CNC machine. How do we change our, our home position? Well, we have to calculate this toolpath, and I'll show you how to do it. Because it's not in this menu, which is stupid. I don't know why they did it. But just click calculate. You can name it if you want something special. I just I just leave them the original names. So you're going to see it'll move you to the 3D view, and it's going to show you lines, and those are the paths that the tool is going to take. So it's going to go from zero zero, and in my case two, yours guys is point eight. It's going to move to the center. It's going to plunge in, and then it's going to start moving around. All right, and then it's going to go down again, and start moving around. And then the red red lines mean rapid, which means it's out of the material and it's just as fast as that machine can go. Blue lines are feed, which means it knows it's cutting, so it's slowing down. Where, are, where is it ramping? Can you see that? Right there and right there. Okay. Those little, those little short lines that are straight. Um, you'll be able to see it in the, in, the, in the render here in a second. Now what we're going to do is, on our menu on the right hand side, it's, we have a top that's a tool path, so we have tool, uh, pocket one selected. I just changed my material. Um, we want to show 2D preview, which is fine. And then in the preview menu, it says, you know, what material you're using. You want to go down the machined area color. That's if you want to color your material. It depends on what you like. And then I'm going to click animate preview. It's a little bit more informative the first couple times. It slows down the rendering process, but it shows you how the tool moves. It's really nice. And then I'm going to click preview toolpath. And it's gonna, we're going to watch the tool move. 
just to make sure it doesn't screw up. Uh, if you have a slow PC, don't watch the animation. If you have a fast PC, it's kind of hard to watch. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. No, 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 no I'm saying, is there any way to slow that down? To no, make it? there is not. I mean, because that's... Oh, wow. Mine was done in a second. Yeah. Mine is... I think I, I have something changed on mine, but... Uh, oh, I have my toolpaths completely different than your guys's. Your guys's are stock toolpaths for, like, a $50,000 CNC router. Okay. Oh, mine, for... mine are the actual toolpaths the machine uses. So, it is a scaled version of that. Somehow. So, after I've previewed the toolpath, how do I unpreview it? You click reset preview. All right, now, most of the time, I just unclick animate. Uh, the only time I animate previews is when I'm doing something I've never done before, like a texture toolpath, and I want to see how the tool's going to move. That way, I know in my mind when I'm doing the setup, hey, the tool's going to swing by here. I better not put a clamp here. All right, but after you're familiar with how all the toolpaths work, you pretty much don't have to animate the previews anymore. So all you'll do is you'll unclick animate, preview toolpath, and it pops right up. So it, well, mine's running at a slower speed. Bam. And you can actually drag and check that out in 3D. And you can zoom your mouse in. You can't do a great flyover because it pins it to the center of the part. What's Just here? click preview. All right. I'm, Click your board, drag it. So you can look at it from all angles. Be like, oh wait, I don't want that straight edge, I want a 45 there. And then I can go back and do that. All right, Oops. if this is all I wanted, I can go ahead and save this. I want you guys to go ahead and set it up right now on your PCs. Uh, we're gonna click close in this menu on the right. And then in our toolpath operations, find the one with a little floppy disk on it. Floppy disk. Is this a safe toolpath? Everyone there? Mm -hmm. Nope. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you find a little floppy disk? It's on the right hand side of the toolpaths. Oh. Oh. See it? Yeah. All right, when you click on that, um, you get a couple different ways you can do this. You can click um, under the save toolpath. Where's the save toolpath? You can click output all visible toolpaths. Our machine doesn't have a tool changer on it. So if you have a program that takes more than one tool, it won't let you do it. All right, so you need to select which one you want with a little check mark. It'll come down, it says toolpath to be saved, and then I'll click save toolpath. Now, all of your guys should say Anderson ATC millimeter.nc. That is not the machine we have. I want you guys to open up where it says post processor, open it up right now, and scroll down until you see G code, and in parentheses it'll say inch.tap. It's the first one of the G codes then? Yeah, it's the first one of the G codes. Should be the first one of the G, G codes. code inch tap? Yep, dot tap. It's a dot tap file, which is just a, a super, it's an old, old, old version of a D, uh, text file. So that way, if I had a, a CNC from the 60s, no, that could take guy. this G code directly. And choose the G code inch okay. dot All right, it's a very, very basic form of it. Now, if I click Save Toolpath, it's going to ask me what I want to name it, where I want to save it. That is the file you will you will save, put on a floppy disk or whatever, and put it right in the CNC. Oh, this is... Oh. All right, click Close. Okay, so what are we... Right. And then what the floppy system? disk is? Oh, here. Yeah. Right. All right. Yeah, G code inch tap. G code inch tap. If it is not saved, if it is saved in anything other than that, yeah. the machine may crash or just not work. Okay. Um, because what a post process is, is basically it's converting the G code into this very specific language that that machine likes. Um, since we're in G code inch tap, there's no tool changer. It knows that. It won't let us run multiple tools before. Um, Where are we saving this? Wherever you.